Hi guys, here I am with John Stolart. John, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of quick questions, John. Uh, what's, what's your inspiration for this, this new exhibition? Um, well, it's an ongoing thing, really. It's just um, sort of exploring the art of dressing or undressing, you know, in, um, sort of erotic underwear, women, the obsession we have for both men and women. And it's been, I've been photographing it for quite a while, and this venue called with the Mer is probably perfect for that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Time. Yeah. Wow. And, and you know, most of your your previous work has been so much to do with celebrities. Uh, this kind of yeah. is, a, is a whole new angle. Well, it, yeah. Well, it's, it's been going on more than you think, actually. And, and I think the word celebrity is quite different from what it was when I started. Okay. Uh, I even think celebrity is quite a down word now. I mean, I, when people say to you. Do I photograph celebrities? I try and say no, I photograph film stars or rock stars. Because what is a celebrity now? It's someone who's come third in Big Brother, you know, it's just meaningless. Uh, and I've always found erotic photography really interesting, right back to when photography was invented, it was pornography became filmed within 10 years. Sure, sure. But is there is there a particular person that you'd say has been, you know, the most exciting person you've ever photographed? Or um, what who comes to mind? It, I wouldn't, it's exciting, you um, I usually remember the people who are nicest, really. Okay. You know, people like Pierce Brosnan, lovely guy, Vivian Westwood, fascinating character. Um, amazing people, sort of Iggy Pop, you know, who totally delivers what you think he's going to be like. Rolling Stones, exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're rather predictable, I suppose, answers, but, you know, that's why they are where they are. Sure. But Absolutely. doing this type of work, it's sort of, it's a bit more free. Okay. Um, and there's all, you could have jokes about it because it's some really sexy girls. Um, but I don't know, I've always just been drawn to that whole thing of the allure of sort of erotic photography. Wow. And was there a, a, a highlight in, in, in this set of photographs that... Uh... Um, no, the, the, most photographers would probably tell you highlights are always the next shoot, because you're always thinking about the next one. Right. Um, but certainly one of the most fascinating is photographing that, um, women heavily pregnant. Okay. Um, and women who've come to me to be photographed, they've come to me by the way, is yeah. because they want to be photographed in that style. Sure, sure. A, a modern, uh, did I say it, sexy style. Uh, I think they're quite beautiful and women who have seen the pictures uh, today have really been amazing. That's how they'd be photographed, they said. In other words, getting away from the sort of earth, mother, you know, um, you know, do not touch me, sure. I am Absolutely. the earth, mother. When the girls are photographed, the women rather. You know they're they're really proud the way they look. I yeah, know it's 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 an amazing concept. Mm, yeah, I'd like to expand it more actually. Yeah. Um, it's it's very low key, and I just get approached usually by the women themselves, not even by their husbands. I suppose it's because it's a whole different experience for them too, being in in a phase of pregnancy. And, uh, well, I suppose so, and, and you know I was always used to women. You know, oh my husband doesn't like me looking like this. I look like a fat cow. But actually, I find it completely the opposite. I think a lot of women feel fantastic uh, pregnant. Fantastic. All right, we're, we're kind of. I think it's great panning kind of around like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, most monsters. <laughs> John, so this is uh, your Dirty Little Pictures collection. Uh, what, what, what got the inspiration for this? Well, it was many years ago, um, I was very young when I was in Pompeii, in ancient Pompeii. Anyone who's been there would know what I mean. There's a, a whole house that's left of it. Sure. And it's um, it's perfect condition, give or take. And above each bed is a little dirty picture. Sure. And like a little mosaic thing. Not mosaic, like a, just a little painting of a sexual position or some ancient Rome, uh, the, the Romans get yeah, up to And I thought, oh, God, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. It's yeah. all been done before. And um, that was years ago, and I'm not, I'm not interested in making pornography in any way. I, I, I'll watch it if it's on, I mean, most people do. But then I discovered that Britain was one of the last countries, major Western countries, to make hardcore adult movies. And I found out, uh, unbelievably, that they were going to be made in my neighbourhood. Really? Yeah, they're, wow. all, they're all made in Chelsea. Oh, wow. So what I did, I approached the producers and said, could I come on the set and be as unobtrusive as possible? and make a document 
uh, not make porn for pictures, even though some of these pictures are quite explicit, sure. but to document the people, uh, you know, not just, they call them the talent, but the cameraman, the makeup artist, lighting, sound, you know, they all come into it. And that's what I did. So I'd go on and off uh, movie sets for like, two, on and off for two years. Sure. And hence I called it Dirty Little Pictures, because they're all little wow, pictures. Wow, two years is a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so it's, this, is, this is work of two, two years? Yeah, there's a lot more than that. And I, I wouldn't stay on the movie all the time. I would go in, I would get told that a certain person was going to be there. So I would photograph that person. Because like all of, um, industries, there are certain players, you know, stars if you like. Believe sure. it or not, there are stars in, in porn films. And uh, I just found it fascinating, the whole thing. And it, it's quite uncomfortable at first to be on a set. And, um, and then you sort of get used to it, and then you have to remind yourself what's going on in these films. And that they're, they're all perfectly normal. They all have boyfriends, girlfriends. Yeah, and yeah no, absolutely. And, 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 and is there uh, any new ideas on, on new projects that you uh, um, think might I'm, come out of this? Or well, I'd love to get this as a book. Obviously, it's quite controversial. So your average run-of-the-mill publishers would probably balk at it. Though I must say, I go into bookshops. Yeah. Uh, and if Tasha never see this, I'd love them to give me a ring. <laughs> um, but I think it would make a, a great um, book documentary. Um, but I'm always working on the next project, you know, whatever that may be. Sure. Um, I think the future for me is really in publishing exhibitions, sure. far more interesting than sort of what's left of editorial photography. I suppose you also have a, a great collection of stuff that you Yeah, that's, a, you know, that's what I'd love to do. You know, one day I've got to do my archive. You know, I've been in London since 85. Wow. So it's a long time. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I'm still standing, still surviving. So that's what I've got to do. And what made you decide to, uh, to pick Ween as your, as your partner? Well, to, um, to be honest, I've approached by quite a few people, you know, uh, soft drinks and water drinks. And I just wanted something that was pretty unique, stood yeah. out. And, you know, and I'm not just saying it, it was a quality product, really. Absolutely. Yeah, I suppose it's, uh, it relates to your kind of work. You're well, yeah, really yeah, just something you different. Out and, uh, so just di you know, just a bit different. Fantastic. Well, I uh, hope it's all a success. Yeah, and, uh, well, we've got to keep trying. We'll keep working with you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Thank you. 